galaxy. Yeah. Someone at the door, John, now I'm here to stay. Tell me who the fuck gonna face the music. More brick laying that screen time. Been cutting back on the daily usage. Long road for the road dogs, for the weird minds from a soapbox. Got BKTs on this bitch, so everybody get a rolled on, yeah. Yeah, everybody get a rolled on. Check artist credits on BMI. I'm just too kind to expose y'all. And I see a team with a gold sign and question if y'all ever rolled on. <laughs> What is up, my friends? Welcome back. Another episode, Dr. Yogg's Clinic. My name is Brandon Osborne, AKA Control for Days. Today, I'm gonna to run you... Let me try that again. I'm gonna be running you through a modern league match, playing the deck Black Green Yogg Moth in modern. Um, the point of this is for me to teach you the ins and outs of this deck, to get you familiarized with the common lines, how to sideboard, the strategy for certain matchups. Uh, we are paired against an opponent right now. They've revealed a Gigantha. This is my second match in a row where that has been the case. I don't know what they're playing, but if you clicked on the video, you probably do know what they're playing already. Uh, I'm going to jump in and uh, give it a go. See if we can get the W. We are, we are fighting for our life right now. We are 2-2 in this league. It has not been a great league. We're going to see if we can get the 3-2 and get our money back. Opening 7, not very good. We're going to mulligan it. Um, that was a pretty easy decision. Our six isn't great either. Um, decks we're thinking about when we see a Gigantha are Tron, Shadow, which I just played, and um, some sort of like Asmo variant. It could also be Affinity. Um, this hand really isn't very good against any of them, but I think we have to keep it and hope that the top of our deck is kind to us. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna ship the Misty and see how this pans out. I don't have particularly high expectations for this game, given what our opening seven looks like, or opening six, I should say. It's looking like another match against Death Shadow. Right off the bat, there's a Ragavan. Grist is a fine draw if it sticks in our hand. We will see. Hoping this bird survives. It is not likely though. Our opponent kept seven and they pulled a peat land off the top, which we are very happy about that. We don't want to draw that. Thought seize, there goes our grist. To be expected. Let's we'll see what they do from here. Another thought seize. They're probably going to take our cord. There that goes. So all of our business is gone. We just got a bunch of birds at this point. And they have a 1-1 one, one Death Shadow. All right, Yawgmoth, pretty good draw. Play out our bird and pass the turn. They have two cards in hand, so if we are put in a position where we get to cast our Yawgmoth next turn, we will be in pretty good shape. Um, I think we're gonna take the three here. We'll let them do their thing with Ragavan. Well, I guess take five, six. We'll take six, that's fine. And they got a wall of roots for their troubles. The great thing about um, Ragavan against this deck is that most of our cards are not very good. So typically we're okay with them stealing stuff with Ragavan. It's not the end of the world. Um, so I don't want to fetch here because it gives them the opportunity to uh, counter my Yawgmoth with uh, a Drown in the Lock. So we're just going to play out our Yawgmoth and then pass. And you notice they thought about it there for a second. They, they stalled for a moment, um, which to me says, yes, they have a drown in the lock. So we'll see how this pans out here.
I think it was the right move to get the Dried Arbor a few turns ago. I think that, that was definitely a big move in that instance, um, because now, had I wanted it, I wouldn't have been able to get it, because once again, they're, they're likely going to have an answer to this Yogg Moth, so. <clears throat> Okay, so that's unfortunate. They're setting up the Drown in the Lock, and we kind of have to let them do that. So obviously we're going to sacrifice here. What they should have done, once again, assuming they have Drown in the Lock, is they should have done it in response, if they have it. Um, In response to me drawing a card there okay yeah so that's what we expected that's what we thought um, they had zero cards in hand so I could always try to mise a um, endurance off the top I don't think it's worth it in this instance I think with them playing off the top we're okay to let this happen I think our hand is good enough where it can hold us over, so um, we're fine with that. So here, I'm gonna play out our marsh, play out our young wolf, and we will pass the turn from here. We're hoping we get another turn. That's our, our hope. If we do, we can get a grist, and then from there, we should be in some so shape. Be in a position where we could potentially make a comeback. If they drew a lightning bolt, we're gonna die here because we're, we're gonna use our fetch land. So we'll see if that's what they drew. Uh, it does not appear so. All right, we just drew into a grist, which is really good. Um. We'll see if they drew another Drown in the Lock. We're hoping they did not. Okay, so Grist has hit the battlefield. I'm gonna tick up this first turn because it's gonna make our cord better. Okay, they drew an Unholy Heat, which is fine. We need them to brick for like a turn. To give ourselves a window where we can we can start pulling ahead here. Block the shadow. Okay, innkeeper is pretty good, so we'll cast that guy out. We can actually innkeeper and get ourselves something like a Drolf's Messenger, which would be pretty big game. I think we're gonna wait though. We're gonna wait a moment and see what happens. They have a card in hand. They didn't cast, they didn't put the Gigantha into their hand, which is a little suspect. just gonna block here and then just pass the turn or pass priority I don't think we're gonna we're not gonna burn our cord yet okay they took the Gigantha they played out a land so we are okay right now and we drew into Yawgmoth which is really good And if they don't have a counter here, we can just draw infinite cards. So I think I could try to do that right now, but I don't think I'm going to. If they cast the Gigantha, we'll take advantage of that.
And if they don't have an answer to the Yawgmoth, I can also get a... Um, Um, I can get a Dralf's Messenger and just kill them. So from here, we're going to block. So there's a little bit of a push-pull here. If I cord right now, they could bolt me in response. If I sacrifice the young wolf, I can't cord and I can't bolt in response. I'll go down to two, but I think this is kind of the line I've, I've put myself into. So we'll see if they drew a bolt. I don't think they did. All right, we're up to three. And from here, I think we're pretty good. And there, I think that locks that up for us. Let's see if they play out this Gigantha. Thinking about something. Okay, there's the Gigantha, that's fine. Oh, I meant to cord there, oops. Uh, yeah, that was a misclick. I was supposed to cord for another young wolf. Uh, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us. Um, Alright, so unless they have like a spell pierce, I'm actually going to play out my land first just in case they do have something like a spell pierce. Alright, so I'll play out the land and then we'll go Cord for three. Done. Uh, we'll get a Dross Messenger, and this should lock up the game for us. Okay, and they scooped. Writing's on the wall, we got there. I think that was game one. It was a long game one if it was. It was on a mulligan. Um, so I didn't think we were going to win that game. Our opening hand was not great, but it panned out and we did okay. So this is the way I boarded in our last match against them. Um, it worked out fine. Uh, I think we're going to do the same thing. The other card I'm considering is the Liberator. Because our last opponent had Hearse. Um, not sure it's worth it though. I like shaving Eldritch Evolutions in this matchup. I like shaving Birds of Paradise because usually they're just bolt fodder. Um, just not, not great. Um, I think this all looks pretty good, so we'll go with it. We'll see how this pans out. Okay, opening seven, I really like this hand. Um, I kind of would wish this Geist was a wolf, but outside of that, I, I like it a lot, so we're going to keep this seven. Something's going to get discarded out of this hand, I'm guessing. Wow, and they play a land tapped. That is very strange. Very unusual. That was a really good draw as well. Um, pass the turn. I wonder if they have some sort of like a transformational sideboard plan or something like that. Alright, there's a shredder. That's fine. Not a big deal, for now. Okay, we'll yield. Our turn, we drew a second Yog Moth. So here we can go, we can go Innkeeper into Geist, but that lets them use their Shredder again. We can go Geist with a tap land. We can go Grist up tick. We can go Grist down tick. If we go Grist up tick, 
what is likely, I think, is that they swing with their shredder and then kill it with like a bolt or something like that. Um, just going innkeeper also seems fine because it puts us on Yawgmoth mana next turn and gives us some life gain. So I think I'm okay with that. From a tempo standpoint, it's not great, but I think it's good enough given what we're trying to do here. They can't counter anything right now. We don't have any cards in our graveyard, so they can't cast Drown in the Lock. And for the time being, just a 2-4 flyer isn't that scary, especially if the Innkeeper stays in play and we can, can gain some life. And then if it, if they do something where they're tapping out, um, we could always go Geist into Grist and down tick and kill the Shredder as well if we draw another land, which I think would be pretty strong as well. All right, they were fed shocking this time. They did not last time, which was very odd. I wonder if this is another Shredder. It is. Okay, so now this is getting a little bit scary, them having access to two of them. They're gonna Thought Seize us, and they're gonna see a pretty stocked hand, which we are pretty pleased about. They dumped two baubles into the graveyard. I think they're hoping to hit a Yog Moth here, but because they knew about one off one of the baubles, but uh, they're going to see two and be a little disappointed, most likely. So, with that being said, I think the take is probably either Grist or Endurance. Endurance is nice because it lets us cast a free spell, draw a card, and dump one of these shredders once we get a Yog Moth into play. thinking. I have a tough decision here. I don't blame them for pondering this decision. Okay, and they take the grist. Okay, that is not a bad draw either. But I think... four card types. I think we lead on Yawgmoth. And then depending on what they try to do, we can potentially have answers for what they're doing. So if they try to unholy heat the Yawgmoth, we can flash our endurance into play. Okay, that's fine. I feel like if we draw and land next turn, we're gonna be in really, really good shape because we can go, hopefully, go Geist into Abrupt Decay and then go from there. I imagine they want to hit a second spell this turn as well, so they can hit us for seven, potentially. More thinking, more pondering. Her 
purse is exiled. We'll see if they have the land to cast it. They do. Okay. So after the hearse comes into play, we're going to have a little bit of a decision to make. Do we get rid of one of the shredders, which is going to pressure our life total pretty quickly, or do we get rid of the hearse itself? So right now the hearse isn't too impressive. All right, taking a hit for six, which is fine. wanted to land there. Um, life totals are even. Hmm. So if we play out a Geist, we can swing for five, put them to seven. They'll be able to swing for potentially eight, which would be pretty bad for us. So I do think we need to get rid of one of these, these shredders this turn. So I think we're going to lead Decay here, and then we're going to sacrifice our Hierarch to dump a, a um, take it to a counter off of the the other shredder hopefully drawing into a land here that's our plan okay we got our land play that out all right so I think we're in okay shape now um, get another basic Get a Geist in play, and we'll get another counter off their Shredder. I forgot about that. That's unfortunate. Okay. We'll go up to 11. And from here, they're not in a position to activate the Hearse now, because we can... Um, we can interact at instant speed, get a, a Geist into our graveyard, and then go from there. They're thinking about it. That would be very... Wow. Wow. They did it. Okay. So we're going to take full advantage of this situation um, and we're, we're going to evoke our endurance right now too uh, before our evoke happens cancel I guess they're in a situation now where they can potentially kill our Yawgmoth. Um, they can kill our Yawgmoth with a Drown in the Lock, which is, I guess, maybe a little bit of a misstep. Maybe I should have targeted myself here. I think our card advantage is going to be enough. All right, so... So 
We're at 11 life, our opponent is at seven life, and we are in a pretty good position from here, I think. I think, I might have overextended a little bit there with that, that endurance play. It's possible I should have targeted myself, we'll see. Like if they have a drown in the lock and a um, like a bolt of some sort, I might be in a little bit of trouble. Need to make sure I'm not F6 here. Okay, so there's the drown, which we were expecting. That's fine. There's the bolt. Okay, so that's kind of what we talked about. It's like worst case scenario. Thought sees is fine. And they got some tough cards to choose from. Arbor, which isn't great. Um, I think the line here is probably play out the Arbor, play out the Grist, uptick, and pass the turn. Grist and Innkeeper, a nice little combo as well. Gris, or Innkeeper and Hepatra, also kind of a little combo, which is nice. The hearse is picking up steam. You can activate it to be a 2-2 once they have two power in play. Three, they brought Gigantha into their hand, which is really good for us. I think that's a, a good sign. Okay, so from here, I think I just keep upticking Grist. I think that's the move. here where we can just ultimate grist and then they have to tap the hearst and then we can just kind of alpha strike them from there um, depending I mean they have a gigant in hand we'll see if they cast it but we're, we're kind of putting them in a corner if they do cast that out I guess I guess I could have attacked last turn I was thinking that they could activate 
the hearse as a creature, but it takes two to crew it. So that was actually a mistake on my point part. I should have attacked. Um, and because of that, I think they're, I think they have to play out the Gigantha here. Okay, so there it is. We're gonna fetch EOT. So once again, if we just pull a, a Court of Calling off the top, we'll just win the game. Endurance is really good as well. So here they're kind of put in a position, I'm gonna sacrifice an insect here and we're gonna get rid of the Gigantha and they're gonna be forced to activate the Gigantha or activate the, the hearse from here. they don't, they're in trouble. Okay, there it is. And we're gonna play out our Hierarch. Gain a life, pass the turn, then we have Endurance up during their turn. That's fine. I feel like a scoop might be coming on here. Dragon's Rage is fine. This is not going to work out the way that they want it to. They're going to be a little disappointed with the outcome of what happens here. So we're going to target them. And they scoop the match. All right. We got there, we salvaged a 3-2 in this league. It did not start off well, but we finished. We won the last two matches against Death Shadow, so we came out on top. Uh, Death Shadow, very favorable matchup for this deck. Uh, it does take some practice and some skill to kind of master the lines and navigate the intricacies of it, but I definitely think we're pretty favored in the matchup. Um, I'm gonna check out. Hopefully you've learned something here today or enjoyed the video or you know, these matches against this deck seem to be pretty interactive and pretty fun to play against. So hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Uh, if you want to support me, definitely hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you would have done differently in this match. Uh, I always like to hear, um, you know, how people would approach the match a little bit differently. And I always miss things from time to time. So uh, if you caught something that I missed, let me know. Uh, another way you can support me if you choose to is head over to my Patreon. Um, you can be a subscriber there as well, and I greatly, greatly appreciate any contributions that are made over on my Patreon. So, link is in the description. With that, I am checking out. My name is Brandon Osborne, aka, AKA Control for Days. It's been a long day. Uh, I will see you guys next time. I hope you continue to be well. Until then. <laughs>